There are a few experiences in your life that you will always look back on. One of these experiences for me is our beautiful trip to Iceland. It's always been a dream of mine to visit this magical place. From the time on I saw my first Björk music video and was completely enchanted by this strange yet gorgeous sound in the otherworldly landscapes. The wish to see Iceland with my own eyes grew stronger and stronger over the years. And in January 2020, everything seemed to be falling into place. And so we booked our flights and planned our journey. With all this chaos in the world, we didn't know if we could even travel at all. Borders were closed and Germany, the country we live in, urged its citizens to stay inside and don't leave the house if not absolutely necessary. But then, after a few months, things seemed to turn around. Since most European citizens acted responsibly by sticking to the safety rules of their governments, there were less and less cases and more and more European borders could reopen again. So after months of being unsure if we could ever make it to Iceland in 2020, after our flights were rebooked, cancelled and rebooked again, we finally got the OK and were ready to go on our journey. First, we had to rent a car at the airport. It's basically impossible to see all the beautiful spots on the island without a car. So even the three hours waiting time were definitely worth getting on. Then we drove from the airport to Reykjavik, where we would spend our first two days at a hotel right in the middle of the city. Reykjavik is the capital of Iceland, and with its 122,853 citizens, a rather small city. Small, but extremely cute, with all its tiny houses that are often painted in bright colors. Probably as a beautiful contrast to the gray skies so often high above them. We heard how expensive Iceland should be, so we were prepared to eat instant soup every day. Lucky for us though, there were a few bakeries in the city that were super affordable and had lots and lots of delicious sweets, like the super cute one right in the middle of the city. For grocery shopping, I can highly recommend the bonus supermarkets that you can find all over the island. Since our second day was rather grey and rainy, we decided to spend it at the Perlon Museum. I highly recommend checking out this place, especially if you are interested in Iceland's history and all the nature phenomena on the island. The next day we woke up to bright blue skies and sunshine. And so we decided that we'd like to go on an adventure. First though, we had to switch from the hotel to the Airbnb. 
We knew that we needed a place to relax in between traveling and exploring. But even though we saw the pictures of this place online, we didn't expect it to be this beautiful. Sadly, our friend Dustin got sick that day and couldn't join us on our trip to the Sneefeldsjökull National Park. But at least he could relax in this beautiful place. So we jumped into the car and started our first real exploration of the island. Kirkefell was around three hours away from our Airbnb. But we were so fascinated with the landscape surrounding us that the time just flew by. Our first stop on that trip was the Buddha Kirkja. We had an idea for a photo shooting there, and since we were almost alone, it was super chill to realize them and even experiment a bit. By the way, I'm pretty sure that I'm butchering all these names, and I'm sorry, I'm trying my best. We originally thought about doing dark and moody shots, but the blue sky followed us throughout our whole journey. It was beautiful, but we were a little bit concerned if we could even take some dark and mysterious pictures, but I think we kind of managed anyway. So we tried to adjust to the light and were also secretly really happy about all this beautiful sunshine. We arrive at the stunning Kirkefell Mount during the golden hour so the landscape was dipped in gorgeous warm light. The next day we planned to go on the famous Golden Circle Tour. We started our trip in the beautiful Thingvellir National Park. It got its name from the Ting, an annual parliament which took place from 930 after the Viking settlers came to Iceland until 1271 right where the tectonic plates from Europe and America shift into each other. You can feel how strong the forces of nature are at this place. So, we took a long walk through the park and found this beautiful waterfall. It was such a relaxing mood there, and I could have stayed for many more hours if we didn't have some other plans for that day. But we did, and so our next stop was the Geysir hot stream area, that lies about half an hour from Tingvellir National Park. The whole area is overflown with hot steams, some even as hot as 100 degrees Celsius, hence why it's also forbidden to go beyond the official roads. We also tried to take some pictures in front of the gaze, but we failed miserably. It was still a super fun experience though, and seeing these nature phenomena up front was so fascinating. After searching for a good spot, we found this hot steam that made the area look super foggy. The air had a really nice warm temperature, but the smell! <laughs> well, we tried to look our best while sitting in warm fog that smelled like rotten eggs. Our last stop on that day was the giant waterfall Gulfos. Gulfos means the golden waterfall. And since we reached it during the golden hour, we could easily understand why. Standing so close to this giant force of nature actually made me feel kind of dizzy. You can truly feel how tiny and easy breakable we humans are right next to these massive water masses. When the sun set, 
We drove back to the Airbnb to cook something delicious and let the day end with a cup of tea. This day was the most magical day for me. It started with a fairy tale waterfall and ended with the northern lights. Our first stop was Seljalandsfoss, which was about 40 minutes away from our Airbnb. And there's no other word to describe it than magical. I know I overused this word already. I will use it again. Because look at this. This was my personal favorite Icelandic waterfall. It truly felt like I was at a place where the fairies live. And we also found another place nearby. We heard that there should be a waterfall, but only after seeing other people walking into the cave did we understand that the waterfall was inside the cave. We all got super wet, but it was so worth it. The area looked like a video game to me. Like I was on a quest and I just had to find the right entrance to get into a secret cave. Do you have enough of waterfalls yet? Because we most definitely didn't. Our next stop was Skogafoss. And we were extremely lucky to see the waterfall without any people in front of it. Usually this whole area is full of tourists, so we were so, so happy to be able to see it this way. We also had an idea for a photo shooting in front of the waterfall. And even though it was freaking cold that day, the outcome was worth the freezing. I found these beautiful volcanic rocks in front of the waterfall. And of course, I couldn't help myself. And I'm currently working on new jewelry designs for my label Vespermod. Our last stop on that day was the famous Rendesfjara beach, also known as the Black Beach due to all the volcanic stones there that turn black once they get wet. Being at Reines Fiera beach almost felt surreal due to its breathtaking beauty. And little did we know that on our way back to the Airbnb later, we'd see the northern lights. We tried to film them, but they were impossible to catch, so we took some pictures of them instead. In the second part of my Iceland vlog, I'll take you with me on our road trip to Jökulsalon Glacier and the Diamond Beach. As well as the Blue Lagoon and natural hot steam areas. Thank you all so so much for watching. And I hope that this video could bring you some joy and also some insight in this beautiful island. Maybe you would like to see Iceland yourself one day? I can highly recommend it. I hope to see you soon. Have a beautiful day and stay safe.